Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, we're doing Rambling Reels with the Rays, which is a new name we kind of came up with. We've been talking about on the UFC podcast how we kind of wanted to get into um, talking about movies and who we are as, you know, just as people. And movies are kind of close to our hearts, right? So movies, video games, and whatnot. So this is the first one. It's kind of like a trial. We're going to see how it goes. Um, so this whole video series will be Rambling Reels with the Rays. So the kind of first question we got here that we kind of came up with, we have a few questions. The, the format is we're going to go through a few questions to kind of get you to know about us, and then we'll review a movie afterwards, which will be Suicide Squad, the new yeah. Suicide Squad. We both watched it maybe like two days ago, and um, we'll give you a review on that. So some of these questions are going to be about us, and then other ones are going to kind of be about, like, the theme. So Suicide Squad is about villains. We have, like, a couple of questions about villains. Mm -hmm. So the very first question we got to kind of start the conversation is, what are some movies that made you who you are today? So, like, movies from your childhood that you think you got a, maybe a bit of your personality from or that resonate with you? You said you had, like, six, right? Yeah, I had uh, six movies. Uh, the first one that I said made me who I am today was uh, The Mask. Okay. Because um, it's just like, I feel like that kind of tied into my comedy sense. Like, that's what I laugh at now. Like, that's my kind of humor. Yeah. Um, like wacky cartoony type is what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Just like. Okay. So The Mask. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go back and forth, or I'm just gonna go. Down we're just my gonna list. go. We're gonna do this one. Uh, the second one, I said Indiana Jones. I feel like that. Oh, that's a good of, one. Yeah, that sort of made me who like I am today. Like as adventurer, like I always wanna go find stuff, or I wanna just venture out and do. I guess. Okay. Well, now let me ask. So, Indiana, which Indiana Jones? Um. Is there a particular one? Probably Crystal Skull. The Crystal Skull? Yeah. That's the one... No, uh, not Crystal Skull. Because that's the newest one with the aliens, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was shit. Um, yeah, that one was pretty shit. I was going to say, bro, if you... That's where I originated my I, shit from. I always mix the one up with Tomb. The one where he grabs the... Because he grabs, like, a golden monkey or something like that. And he picks it up and throws goes the ball. Yeah, that's the, so. That's the beginning of Raiders of the Lost yeah, Ark. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, yes. and then the, but then there's also the one. I know the other one you're talking about because the ones we watched a lot as kids. Because mm -hmm. obviously we watched the same. We could have combined this list most likely, yeah. but um, the one you're talking about is from the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I know the other one we watched is when he's like Kaliba, Kaliba, yeah. and he takes the fucking the dude's heart out. Like he reaches in and pulls the guy's heart out. And, and he's like, holding those rocks that look like sugar babies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's the last, the last crusade. I think, I want to say that's. I don't know, they're going to tear us up, fucking, they're going to tear us up in the comments yeah. about that shit. But. I don't know y'all's movies and y'all do a movie with you? Raiders of the Lost <laughs> Ark. That's the one we're going to go with. Yeah. That's the one where he runs from, I mean, that's got all the good shit in it. Mm. Okay, so the mask and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Um, then my third one's The Grinch. Ooh, I knew that was going to be on yeah. your list. I feel like that also, I mean, that has my love for Christmas. Oh, uh, yeah, because Christmas is my favorite holiday. So it has my love for Christmas and also some more comedy slash, like, humor. And plus, Jim Carrey's just, he's a goat. He's hilarious. My other one, um, which is kind of the same as Indiana Jones, is Nemo. Because I felt Nemo also got my adventure out. I would always go just wander, try to find new things. Mm-hmm. Other one is Hercules. That kind of ties in with my romance and being like almost a gentleman and a ladies man. And the other one would be Shrek. Shrek kind of got my humor, got my um like fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, fantasy and communication, like all of that. So that yeah, is, that ties it in. Yeah. Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Yeah, yeah Shrek, no. Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Definitely not. Okay, so for me, I kind of only have three. I have uh, The Mask. So The Mask is like my movie. It's my go-to movie. Mm -hmm. I've always loved it. I used to have it on repeat. 
I like the cartoon, the cartoony nature of it. I think I got a lot of my humor from that and kind of being a romantic, right? Because in the movie, he puts on the mask and it brings out the strongest personality traits of you. So his strongest personality traits was humor and like romanticism. And as a kid, I always remembered being like that. I was like, oh, I want to be the best boyfriend one day. And also I was pretty goofy, wacky. So the mask definitely made me who I am today. Um, the other two I could think of, I mean, I could like go on and on about like, well, I like this one because it was my favorite. Like I do like The Grinch. I think The Grinch yeah. is the best Christmas movie ever made. But like, I'm just thinking about when I was a kid, movies that I had on repeat that like maybe influenced who I became. So The Mass has got to be number one. Um, as far as animated goes, the two that come to mind are Hercules for sure. A sense of like her uh, heroism from that movie. Mm -hmm. Love that. Also, that's when I first became, I think, obsessed with Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito fucking rocks in that movie. Yeah. Um, and also, probably one of the best villains of all time, I think. The dude was fun. Hades was Hades funny nice. as hell. No pun intended on that. And then um, the third one was Tarzan. Mm. Tarzan. You can't list all that's the movies, great, man. No, I'm saying that's just a good <laughs> one. No, that's line. a good one. Yeah. It is. Because it's like. I don't know, he finds, it, it kind of preaches, like, finding family, even, uh, obviously, it's not his family, it's gorillas, but, like... Everything is family. Exactly. I also had a, a huge sense of adventure. Uh, I love, like, we lived in a, we live in a pretty rural area. I love walking around in the woods and just exploring, and we watched a lot of movies as kids, but that was a movie that made me want to just, like, get out there and explore, and, like, I guess my love for jungles. I've never even been in an actual jungle, but I was like, oh, my God, I love the nature aspect mm -hmm. of it all. Um... <laughs> Dude, Tux is going fucking down the stairs. I don't know. Come at home. He gets so active whenever we start filming stuff. Um, come here, Tux. Come here. But I would say those those are the like the main three. Like a ton of movies made me who I am. But those are the three I had on repeat that I was like, yeah, this this made me who I am. Yeah. So that's the first question. That's kind of that, introduced. That's interesting though. How like. You had Tarzan, and I had Indiana Jones. That's who made us, like, explorers and try mm -hmm. to wander the place. Dude, Indiana Jones, I even thought when I was making the list, I yeah. was like, I'm going to keep this short. Because we have more questions for you guys. This might be – this is the first one. Like I said, this is a trial. This might be too yeah. long. This might be too short. Let us know in the comments. But I was contemplating putting Indiana Jones on my list because mm -hmm. I was like, I, that was another one I watched all the time. Same like, I could have been like, the first movie I watched that got me into superheroes was X-Men because that's when I was like, oh, dude, Wolverine mm -hmm. is so dope. Like, the very first X-Men. Um, you know, the first horror movie I ever watched that got me into horror was like Jurassic Park. Which, yeah. You know, I some, thought about that too. some people don't really say horror, but like, it was like Jurassic Park 3, too. It the one everybody scary. hates. If you're a little child and you're watching that T-Rex, just like hover above those kids, mm -hmm. you're like, fuck. Well, on... The first one I ever saw was, like, Jurassic Park 3. So, they had, like, the Spinosaurus. Oh, yeah. That was the dude who, like, you know, he, like, snapped the neck of the T-Rex. That's when that guy's, like, in that pond, right? And it's raining heavy and there's a flare and he's just, like, come walking up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, they find the do. the phone and the shit. For some reason, as a kid, I was like, yeah, oh, and they're, on that, they're on that, like, <laughs> fucking... They're on that bridge and saw it was, mm -hmm. like, foggy and that freaking pterodactyl comes, like, walking yes, out. Yes, dude. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. So, like, yeah. I could I could win in all that, but, I, like, I'm just saying as a child, that's kind of... And at, at the beginning of each review, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do a few questions. Um, that question, I feel like anytime we have a guest, we're probably going to ask that question. Mm -hmm. I think you can get to know a lot all about somebody, about, like, the movies they like. Um, so then for the next one, it is the... And this is also what we do for fun. We just figured, you know what? Let's just film this. Yeah. Like a lot of times, I'll, we'll just think of questions like, you know what? Here's a here's a pretty dope movie question, and we'll sit there and discuss it for like hours or something. But another one, we're not going to keep you guys here for hours. That I thought about Maybe. was, what are the top ten character entrances in a movie? And when I say top ten character entrances, I don't mean it's the first time the character comes in the movie. I mean, this is like the first time maybe they come into the scene, right? Mm -hmm. So they've already been in the movie. You already know who's the main character. But it's just like they enter the scene in a really dope fashion. Yeah. So it's a top ten list. And then we have some honorable mentions at the end. I'm thinking of more like on the spot too. Put them in, dude, write them down. Yeah. Or we will discuss them. Okay, so right off the bat, you're going to get fucking pissed at me. Yeah, uh, because I'm going to need your help. <laughs> This one is tied. They're both from comedy movies, and I feel like they're badass, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different definition of badass. D 
Danny McBride, when he first <laughs> wakes up, and this is the end. So he wakes up, and they're playing fucking Cypress Hill. And he's mm -hmm. like, when the shit goes down, he's like in a bathtub, puffing a cigar. You're like, who is that? You know, you got the, he's like puffing the O's. You just see smoke rising yeah. up, feet dangling out at the bathtub. There was a party the night before. So he's the first one awake, and he like goes dancing down the hallway. It's in slow motion. He's like crossing his ankles and shit. Mm -hmm. And then he just cooks all of their supplies that are supposed to last them for like months, years, however they planned it. But he's like cooking it and he's like doing this above the food and for no fucking reason, he's just drenching himself in a gallon of water. Oh, yeah. Like he's just doing things that are just so wasteful because he doesn't know that it's the apocalypse. And then they wake up in this just super pissed. Yeah, they're it's so like, angry, which like makes the scene. Yeah. For me. So like, to me, that's a badass entrance for a character. That's mm. a, for a comedy movie. The second one that I didn't know, because I couldn't decide which one's better, yeah. is Joe Dirt when he's at the fair. Oh, and that is a good one. Yeah, the, the, his sister, like, sees him at the fair, mm -hmm. and it's playing, like, Who Do You Love, right, mm -hmm. by George Thorogood. Mm -hmm. And it's like every time the the fucking Ferris wheel, it's not a Ferris wheel. Every time the ride goes around, yeah, he's, he's like pose. he's posted up like in a different way. He's like moving his hips. He's got like a happy. Tree. He's like tracing his happy trail. But it's funny as fuck because you just have this white trash guy and he's seducing this absolute just ten out of ten hottie. Oh yeah. And he's just seducing her. I, how I don't know. He's got a mullet, happy trail. But it's just like this song's playing. He's shirtless behind a Ferris wheel. For some reason, I'm like, yo, it's badass. That's, <laughs> that's the energy I want that's every nice. summer. That's what I'm trying to... That's the energy. So, who wins in a fight between those two scenes? Um, who wins in a fight? Daniel McBride, easy. I'm but, not saying Joe Dirt yeah, in a fight. I was, yeah, that scene... Um, either way, this at the end is getting on there, because I have that on my list. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, Fun then. I'll have you. I'll let you have this at the end. I'm gonna say Joe Dirt Joe for Dirt. my number ten. You're a Joe Dirt guy. I kind of. I am a Joe Dirt guy. Yeah. I pride myself in that. White trash till the end. Okay, Joe Dirt number ten. You're number ten. Go. My number ten. Yes. And this then we'll work our way up. This is the end. This is my number. 10. This is the end. Number <laughs> ten. Let's go. <laughs> do I need to further? Do we need to further describe it? No. Just say why did you like? Why did you like it so much? Just because, like you said, it was like a badass scene. He really didn't care. He didn't even know what was going on. Like, he pees all over the seat, wipes it off with his boot, and he's like, okay. Like, I, didn't, I forgot about that. Yeah. He pisses on the seat, just goes, Swim. And just keeps walking. He's like dancing down the hallway, and he's like, Yes. Then he's got like an imaginary yeah. audience the whole time. He just thinks he's the shit, and he's like, did this grateful act, and they wake up and they're like, Fuck you. Like, why'd you do this? He's like, Guys, why? I made and you breakfast. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually he leaves. Yeah. Definitely, then, definitely a badass entrance. <laughs> then he makes Chanum Tanum his bitch at the end, and you're like, what right? just happened? So it ties into his yeah. whole character of just being a fucking jerk. Although it was, he was trying to do a good deed. It, it was. was a jerk, just a wasteful way to make food. <laughs> and just pouring water on himself. Just <laughs> why? Yeah. Okay. So, Joe Dirt, this is the end. Mm -hmm. My number nine. Also, this is in no particular order. Yeah, because these are all equally, the greatest, they're like, all equally badass for It's me. just a list I got. Exactly. My number nine is Hulk from The Incredible Hulk. The particular scene I'm talking about is when they have him trapped on a college campus, right? And I'm talking about the Edward Norton Hulk. And he eats the flash drive because he's trying to get like the, the data or whatever. And he gets stuck in like a corridor on this, co on this college campus. It's like a fucking bridge or whatever. And it's like there's glass. And um, they have him trapped and they start just like launching in smoke grenades. And he, he like... The thing about Edward Norton's Hulk I love the most, oh, really any Bruce Banner, is like he doesn't want to be the Hulk. He really doesn't want that. So he's like trying to beg them, like, please just leave me alone. I'm trying to get this. He's always running from them, but they like continually trying to capture him, make him turn. So they launch these, uh, you know, these smoke canisters in there. And then obviously it, enra it enrages him when he sees that um, his girl, which is like the daughter of the sergeant or the whatever, is trying to get to him and then like they're tackling her to stop her which just pisses him off you see his eyes turn green you see his fist hit the ground it starts to turn green you see his shoe pop right and then it zooms out and it just shows like this the corridor with the smoke feeling and then in slow motion i think almost all of mine are going to be kind of in slow motion he just comes rip just he comes pops he just comes busting through the glass right just roaring like a freaking honestly like king kong yeah. like he just comes roaring slow motion hands above head and then just lands 
and then just starts to just charge the military. But the whole sequence of him, like one transforming, I love it when characters like Wolfman, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, anytime somebody's like, Stop me before I kill again. And they start ripping Basically, their Basically, if they have like the Nicolas Cage action. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. When they <laughs> go Nicolas Cage, that's what I want. And he just comes fucking ripping through the glass. That's that's up there for me. So that's number nine. Yeah. Was that on your list or what's your number nine? It's on my list, but it's not my number nine. Okay. My number nine is Sherlock Holmes. Ooh. At the very beginning when he's in a fight. Yeah. Yes. That he's is like, good. Like, that is good. That dude's ass. Yeah. That's that's my that I'll, I'm gonna mention that later in like probably a future video. That's like my favorite fight mm -hmm. scene of all time, fist fight scene. It's so good. The slow mo fucking disco mm. bop, disco bop, disco bop, disco bop. I remember after we watched that, me and my one of my best friends, we watched that together, and then the whole like week following, we just kept disco bop. We would slap each other's eardrums, which is totally not healthy. No, but. Your, your hearing's gonna go out. Oh, it already started. It's already started. I'm deaf. I'm deaf. <laughs> so that's your number nine. Yep. Oh man. That was a good fight scene. It was. Um, okay, so my number eight is from an 80s movie. Sarah Connor in Terminator 2. Actually, it might, it might be early 90s, but mm. Sarah Connor from Terminator 2, when she's in the insane asylum, right? And she's just knocking out these, like, pull-ups. Because the first movie, she was a vic she's a victim. She's running from the Terminator the whole time. It's terrifying. They're just trying to survive from this, like, killing machine that just will not stop. Yeah. And, um, like, this one is a completely different Sarah Connor. Like, she has metamorphosized. She's ripped. She's just killing it. She's, like, doing – she's doing these pull-ups. Her bed's flipped over. Hair's all wild. And whenever they're like, Miss, Miss Connor, because, like, the, the dude has, like, some people they're observing. Mm -hmm. And then she, like, stops doing pull-ups and she turns around and just, like, glares at the – glares at the door, right, with, like, the messy hair. And she's like, good morning, you know, what a commissioner. Not good morning, commissioner. But good morning. <laughs> yes. Good morning, governor. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Oh, shit. I'm yep. going to put that on my yep. honorable <laughs> mention. That's what I was thinking. I didn't know the name of it. That's before. going on honorable mentions. That, that'll, you guys will know what we're talking about in a minute. But mm -hmm. that scene. Sarah Connor from Terminator 2. You go. That next. Uh, that was number <laughs> eight, right? Yes. So you're number eight. My na number eight is Endgame. The ending. When, like, like. All the portals come open mm -hmm. and they come flying through. I was like, okay. I had to fight the urge to put that on my list. See, I, I was like, should I mention it? But I was like, it's great. I, I have to. So it's num it's my number eight. Did you... What part about it was the most badass, though, for you? Was it all the heroes coming? Or when I think about the most badass part of the end of that movie, I think of when the hammer starts to uh -huh. move. That's the most badass part. But I think, like, entrance-wise... Mm -hmm. All of them coming in, that was like a badass entrance. Like, I agree. I agree. That's when you got hyped up and you're like, oh, Thanos about as good as ass beat. Like, I'm trying to, what was the, 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 all right, yeah, let me put it right where, whatever. Okay, so that was number eight. Mm -hmm. My number seven is Darth Vader in Rogue One. Is that also on your list? Mm hmm. Okay. We could just combine lists. Like, if I already mentioned it, just be like, oh, just, like, we'll cross it out or whatever, and then we can talk about it. Okay. Again, guys, this is a trial. We're trying to figure out how to format this. I so like, I feel like we're doing pretty good. I feel like we're doing really good. Uh, <laughs> so, at the end of Rogue One, at the, the hallway, is that the hallway scene? Is that the same yeah. one you got? Okay. When, like, it's dark and just, like, you're... You're... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the... Re and then, like, there's all these rebels, like, maybe 20 in this yeah. hallway corridor. And then the red, like you hear Darth Vader, Darth Vader breathing. It's foggy, and then all of a sudden, just beesh, the red lightsaber mm -hmm. ignites, and it's just like, dude, you know, all twenty of those rebels just shit their pants. Like yeah. there's, there's nothing they can do. Oh god. Yeah, that's what they do. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just please. And then they just get brutalized, dude. Mm -hmm. Brutalized. He just. The one I think about is when he forced, he like force picks up the guy, puts him on the ceiling, and just cuts him in half, and then he just keeps walking. Like, and it's just so easy for him. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not challenged. I mean, the most powerful Sith. Like, that's a whole other argument for a later day, but like, just, mm. I love that scene. Oh yeah, it's, it's so good. You get goosebumps when you watch it. I can't remember. Do they play like the Imperial Mar the dun 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 dun? I don't think they do. But they, yeah. That's the only thing that could have made that scene better. Honestly. But it, when it opens and it's quiet and you just hear him breathing. Yeah. 
I know what's gonna happen. That's Y'all nasty. Gonna die. That's nasty. Yeah. Also, like in The Mandalorian, how they did it's like the same kind of feeling, but mm -hmm. it was with Luke Skywalker killing exactly. the robots. Yeah. Just, just, just like walking through, I was like, damn. It's so good. So good. Damn. It goes hard. It shit goes hard. Dummy. Dummy. Okay. So, what's your number? That was my seven. What's your number seven? Um, My number seven is. It's kind of the same as this is the end. What's his name? Uh, Danny McBride. Danny McBride again? Not, yeah. Dan, not Danny McBride, but it has the same vibes as that. It's Toy Story when Woody comes walking out of the box and he's like doing all this. Oh, yeah. yeah. AKA the gift that probably every guy uses on Tinder yeah. whenever they first start a <laughs> exactly. conversation. Hey, hey. Toy Story. I never even thought about Toy Story. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. That's a bold pick. I like that. It is. Yeah. I, when I was, um, funny story, I had to do like this um, acting thing, like an audition. I had to copy someone. Like, oh, you just walk in, act like you own the place. So I was like, oh, like Toy Story. And the like, director just started cracking up. He's like, exactly like that. I was like, all right, I got you. <laughs> Well, hell yeah. If you yeah. get the director to laugh, dude, you're, you're set. So I was like, I'm just going to do that. And sure enough, he's like, I like it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, yeah, he acts, by the way. We didn't really get to go into that, but he acts. I've mm -hmm. uh, been doing a lot of extra work. Trying to become one of these characters. That'd be, that would be the, that's the mission, right? Yeah. That's all of our Trying dreams. to make my own list. <laughs> me and such me, and such. Me, 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 and me. <laughs> dude, it's, uh, so, Yeah. Toy Story is a... Oh man, I could have put Toy Story on that kid's movie. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about it, too. And I had it on my top five before I had it on there. So I'm going to backtrack real quick. <laughs> Toy Story. I'm not going to say Toy Story, but you know what I'm going to say? A movie that what? made me as a kid. This kind of helped with my imagination. Thinking like, oh my God, everything can be alive. Like in my own... That's a dumbass statement I just made. <laughs> not everything can be alive. But in my head, just being like... Just being more adventurous and uh, yeah. growing my imagination was Small Soldiers. Which is like the adult version of Toy Story. Because I had... A toy. I had Archer, and then my cousin had like the villain from Small Soldiers, like the the army dude. Yeah. And we would set him up in the hallway, and then we would hide and wait for hours, and that helped our imagination because we're like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. They could be fighting, and then we'd peek, and then obviously they didn't move. But Small Soldiers, as a kid, I'm gonna I'm gonna also put that on my list and agree with you. But I'm also adding to that list uh, Monsters Inc. As a kid, yeah, yeah. that was because I feel like that gave you the imagination, like oh. See, and like, we're, we're five years apart, so Monsters, Inc. probably hit you at an age well, where I was kind of older. I, I still yeah. love Monsters, Inc., but it was like, I don't think it made me who I am today. I just mm -hmm. love the movie. That's yeah. a good one. So, Monsters, Inc. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's both of our number sevens. My number six is The Jew Bear from Inglorious Bastards. I got that on my... You have that on your list, too? That's on my honorable mentions, because I just thought, thought about it. Oh, it's your honorable mentions? All right, yeah. we'll take that off the honorable mentions. But that scene goes so hard. Yeah. Right? To the, to the everybody hates Nazis. Yeah. Everybody hates racists. Except neo-Nazis, but everyone hates them. Yeah, everybody hates Nazis and racists besides Nazis and racists. Exactly. So when they have two captured there and you have Brad Pitt doing that, like, yeah. honestly, to me, it's an amazing <laughs> Southern accent. It's, it might be a little bit of the top, but I'm like, hell yeah, 100 Nazi scalps. Mm -hmm. And he's like explaining, he's just like, he has these two Nazis and he's like interrogating him or whatever. And then there's like this dark, the dark tunnel, and you're like, what's in there? What could be in there? And then you start hearing the, the baseball bat. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And then it's the it's the Jew bear, man. It's the Jew bear. And the music it plays too, and he comes walking Jew out. Bear. He's got the the suspenders. He's like not all that muscular, mm -hmm. but he's also he's just like stocky. Yeah. The, the dude looks the corn fed. Jew you've ever seen. Like, yes. Damn. Dude is a buff Jew. Yeah. And he comes out with like a baseball bat and he's and then he like walks up and he's like Everybody's cheering like, ooh, 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 ooh. he's got the wooden baseball bat, Louisville Slugger, and he like taps the, taps a little uh, metal on the Nazi, so and he's get like, that for killing Jews. Yeah, he's like, would you get that for killing Jews? And he's like, for the courage. He doesn't give up, and then just yeah. here's courage. Bow, just bashes him in the temple, beats yeah. the shit out of him. That might be one of my favorite. It, it, I always say it's between that and Django for like my favorite Damn. Quentin Tarantino movies. Do you have that on your list? Too? I don't. That's. On the honorable mentions thing. I do not, but that was my number six. What's your number six? My number six is Monsters Inc. When they all come walking down the corridor in slow motion. Yeah, that's a good one. It is. That is a good one. Mm -hmm. It's pretty badass. And then they in the bloopers they have that, and they're all like tripping and whatnot. I like how they do that too. Yeah, 
Like, they just, like, they make bloopers, even though, obviously, it's animated. Mm -hmm. But, like, they make bloopers for, like, the kids at the end. That That is a pretty badass. A lot of GIFs now, they use that. Yeah. The slow-mo. Slow-mo walking down. They fall. <laughs> they fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's number six. Yep. My number five, we're only halfway through this list. Yeah. My number five is, um... Oh, it's gone low, but it's gone low, though. I yeah. thought it would be over, like, an hour by now. Oh, no, no, no. Time flies when you're having fun, man. That's right. My this one is from the movie Lawless, with Tom Hardy, uh, Shia LaBeouf, and then also the freaking dude from I love the guy. I, I gotta know his name. I gotta learn his name. But the dude from uh, Planet of the Apes, the newer Planet yeah. of the Apes. But the scene when um, so they're the three of them are moonshiners. I see my brother. They're brothers. And these two police, these, like, southern police that, like, they've been paying off for a while because they're, you know, they're the moonshiners there. And then the law kind of worked with the criminals at the time. Well, this Chicago detective comes down, and then he changes it to where the police and the criminals aren't on good terms. Kind of how it should be, but still. Um, the, the police show up, and they're like, yeah, you know, like, you're going to have to start, you know, you, you can't keep, nah, 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 just being cops. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure this is after Shia LaBeouf's character gets the shit kicked out of him because he's the youngest brother. And um, Tom Hardy knows about it. Tom Hardy's kind of like the pack leader of the brothers. And there's a brother named Harold, right, who just stays drunk the entire movie. But I think he's the oldest. He, like, went and fought in World War II is what they say in the movie. So the cops are trying to be, like, all, like, still friendly. But, yeah, we got a job to do. So then Tom Hardy's like, have you met my brother Harold? And then it just shows this. The shot is it shows it's like being filmed from the force perspective almost, right? Like it's a low shot and it's like the back of this dude's feet. And, the, and like you're like, where's this guy coming from? And the dude's just like speed walking. The guy's just like walking just fast. Stopping. Yeah, and he's got boots on, like, and he's just walking. He's walking. And this is the whole time the cops and Tom Hardy are talking. And by the time he's like, have you met my brother Harold? Harold comes, this, just this tall ass hillbilly redneck. Kicks open the screen door that's behind Tom Hardy because there's like a bar behind him. Kicks open this screen door, jumps down two flights or jumps down like two steps, and then just fucking Molly Watt just no, shoot me. Call, call. He's like, oh, what are you going? He goes, oh, what are you going to shoot me? Which is exactly what the cop was yeah. thinking, which He's is hilarious. Like, yes. yes, I'm going to shoot you. And then he just Harold Molly Wop just Molly Wops the freaking uh, the Whoa, cop this just floors him. And just starts beating the shit out of two cops. And then he gets, like, the gas. There's a gas pump. He starts pumping the gas in the cop's mouth. But the whole scene of him, like, stomping through the bar. And you're like, who is this? And then Tom Hardy's like, have you met my brother Harold? Flying through. And just knocks the cop out. That That's up there for me. Mm -hmm. Fucking love that scene. It's such a good scene. That is a great scene. That was my number six. What is your number six? That was actually no, my number, number five. five. That's my number five. Uh, my five is not as badass as that. But, um... Cause that's bad. Isn't that? The Grinch. The Grinch. Yeah. Which the, those multiple entrances, so I I can't really pick one. Mm -hmm. The one where he's like in the parade, where they're like, oh, he's not gonna come down to the mountain. Then he comes flying and he hits a banner and then keeps bouncing. Yes. That was pretty badass. And then his face goes in the cheeks. Yeah. And also, uh, <laughs> yeah, might be my. That it's was, early, that was an early boner for me. That was a really great <laughs> boner. For me. I do remember that. I was like, whoa. That. And when those kids are like climbing, oh my god, kids climbing the mountain, that's in the second one. And, and you talk about the fake monster comes yeah. out. And the third one, he when he's just walking through town and he like burps in that guy's face and he like falls over. He's wearing the fake mask and everything. And the fucking mailroom scene as well. I like the mailroom scene. He's up in the corner. Yeah, he's like just throwing mail. He's like blackmail, blackmail, black 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 jury duty, jury duty. duty. And he flings them all. Yeah. Then the dog like sneezes. He's like consumed tight. He's like. That's got to be all of them. Can't see no more. But what's you, so what's your favorite out of all that? What's my favorite is... Uh, I can tell you right probably, now... Probably when he throws the mail. Okay, I agree. I was going to say, you yeah. cannot say the one in the mountain. Because I remember Jacob was very young I when the movie came out. That and that terrified him. Where the, the dog... There's like a fake... The Grinch uses like this fake uh, animatronic head to scare mm -hmm. away people. And it scared the shit out of Jacob. So I'd have to, he would go stand in the hallway with his back turned and I'd have to stand in front of the TV and watch it. And when it was over, I'd call him and he'd come back in. Cause we, he would watch The Grinch, All Jim Carrey's The Grinch in July, like every single day. Like we watch it every day. But that scene every time scared the crap out of Jacob. I like the mailroom scene too. I think yeah, that one might room. be the, yeah. 
just like stop the show. He and hands the like, kid the saw like, yeah. all right, crap, crap, now run, 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 yeah, run, run, like run, run fast. Like yeah. he's giving, this is so funny. Okay, <laughs> number five for Jacob is The Grinch. The Grinch. My number four, again, this is kind of a cheat because it's not just one character, is the Yurikai in Lord of the Rings. Ooh. So anytime they show up for a battle, right? They're like a larger version of the orc. They're fucking huge, yeah. They have this badass battle music where it's just like, ba da da, bum bum bum, and then the drums go, mm -hmm. and then there's just like, thou hundreds of thousands of just these like snarling beasts that are like they make the sounds of like a lion roaring whenever they, whenever they just like, just standing around like they sound like yeah. these monsters and they're just these huge jack orcs and there's just hundreds of thousands and you know whatever they're coming across they're just killing and eating like they're after a man flesh you know that to me is a badass entrance i literally work out to that music yeah like it's on my playlist so that's my number four what's your number four my number four is um one second oh dang i've switched them up I'm gonna say my number four is. I just had the Incredible Hulk on there, but I'm gonna go we back because yeah. it hasn't been mentioned. Darth Maul. Yeah, it's my number one. Yeah, when he reveals the cloak. Yeah, that, that's a that's a big. And he's like, Duh. that was my number my number one. Oh, well, we can talk about it now. My number one favorite is Darth Maul. Yeah. Since you brought it up though, that that's since you brought it up. Since you had to fucking bring you it up. You ruined my number one. <laughs> so good. Yeah. We gotta go in, you gotta give it life, man. You gotta give that scene, you can't just say Darth Maul. You got Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, yeah, and all these people. These badass freaking, um, just Jedis. Yeah. Uh, and Apprentice, and like, the master. The master, just walking in. And everyone is just like, all right, scram. Like, well, they, they round the corner, they're in the hangar, they round the corner, and it's just closed, right? And he's just sitting there. And then it just opens, and behind is just this one single cloaked figure. And the reason it's so badass is the whole movie, you don't really see much from Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. Like, you know he's a Sith that's in training under the Emperor. Yeah. You know he's in training. You know he's Sith. They thought all Sith were wiped out. You've seen him fight Qui-Gon a little bit. That's when they figure out, oh, there's Sith around. But, like, you haven't seen you haven't seen a lot. So they round the corner, and, like, this, this hangar door just opens, and he's just waiting there. Just, ah! just start, yeah, like, I think playing that awkward music. And he's just got the hood on. I want this. I'm going to get this tattooed on me one day. I have to. And he just slowly takes the hood off and just looks up. And he's got these eyes of just like pure hatred and mm -hmm. I guess you could say evil. But like red and yellow eyes. He's got the horns. Best character entrance ever. Mm -hmm. I might as well not even talk about these other ones because it's the <laughs> best. I'm done. Yeah, he's got the, the face tattoos and all this shit. And he just slowly takes away the hood. And then what you were saying about everybody screaming. Yeah. Like, just, uh, okay. Yeah, everybody's like, okay, we don't want to be part of this. And then Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are just like, well. And they take the robe off and they like get ready to fight. And they go. Darth Maul and takes out the... Zoom. Yes. Double. <laughs> I mean, the most badass character entrance yeah. ever. There's a lot. You could say whatever you want about that movie, but... He's one of the most badass Siths. I have a story. Yeah. You know what? I might as well mention it now. Should mm -hmm. I mention it now or should I just save that story for... i would mention it. So, quick funny story. This also kind of ties into who I am today. Passionate and a fucking nerd. Uh, when I was four years old, that movie came out. 1999. A Phantom's Menace. My grandma picked me up from kindergarten to go see that movie. In theaters. For some reason, as a four-year-old, I don't know what normal four-year-old does this, I was obsessed with Darth Maul. Absolutely obsessed with Darth Maul. Before I even saw the movie, they had all this fan gear and toys and shirts come out for him. I had it all. I had the shoes. I had like a sippy cup with his head on it. I had, you know, shirts and clothes and toys. Love the guy. So I went there with my grandma. And he was the only reason I was watching. The I love Star Wars, but he was the main reason I was watching the movie. Because I'm like, this is going to be the dude, right? I don't know how a four-year-old me sat through that entire movie because they talk about politics basically 90% of the movie. Mm -hmm. But at the very end, when, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet, he gets cut in half by Obi-Wan and just falls, you know, down the the shaft. I was like, 
It's a it's a trash shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trash shoot. When he falls down the chute, uh, fucking. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, wow. I'm, that's so immature. No, bro. It, that's fine. That's what this podcast is for. We gotta expunge those immature <laughs> demons and fucking laugh about shit like that. When he falls down the penis shaft. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I was so enraged at the age of four. I don't even really remember this. My grandma has to tell me this all the time. I'm like, did I really do that? I stood up in the middle of the theater. I remember. I do remember we sat in the front right of the theater. That's all I really remember. Mm -hmm. She said I stood up, turned around, walked out of the theater by myself onto the road. Like I was just going to walk home. And my grandma ran after me. She's like, where are you going? And I was like, it's it's over. The movie's done. Like I'm like, I don't want to watch the rest of it. They killed they killed Darth Maul. They killed the guy. They killed the guy I was here <laughs> it's for. Over. It's over. It's fucking over. Yeah. So that... Kind of made, like, that's how passionate I am about Star Wars. But Darth Maul, that's how much I love Darth Maul, too. He's he's my go-to dude. I always thought he was so cool, but... Okay, so we kind of shared that one with yeah. Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. um, how many do you have left on your list? Because I, I have... I have three. All right, go ahead with one. Because I have two left on my list that aren't honorable mentions. Uh, then I have a bunch of honorable mentions. The honorable mentions we're just going to crank through. So three you already said, though. What? Um, That was Darth Vader. Darth Vader, okay. Yeah. So that one's good. So then we'll just we'll go ahead and do our last two. This one I love because it's a mix of humor and also badassery. Yeah. Jack Sparrow on Ooh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I forgot. I forgot Specifically, there's, it's a whole sequence. Specifically, he's... When, when he's like flying and whatnot? No, 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 no. It's when he comes sailing in and they have pirates hanging, right? And they're like, pirates aren't wanted or thieves aren't wanted. And he gives like a... Like mm -hmm. a salute, but it's like a fucking gentlemanly. It's real like loosey goosey. Like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I'm I'm still gonna come in and steal shit. I'm a pirate. Like yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't care. So that's how he pays respects. But the most badass scene about that is the very next time you see him, which is like the very next scene. His ship is just fucking sinking. He, <laughs> yeah, yes, he comes in that's on amazing. like just like that one little circular part that's at the top of the ship. The mm -hmm. entire ship is just like when when you meet him, he has a bucket and he's just like emptying it out, right? He just comes in and like sticks one foot out and walks onto the dock as his ship just sinks. And then the guy that's supposed to dock the ships are like, it's just so just befundled. I don't even know if that's a word, but I made it just befundled. And he just, Captain Jack just gives him like three golden coins. And he's like, oh, you know, just to park it. And that like sets up, that's the first time you see Jack Sparrow. That sets mm -hmm. up who Jack Sparrow is, where he's kind of like, Lucy Goosey, fun. he's funny, he's yeah. badass, he's like this pirate, like he's got power to him, but at the same time, he's like just hanging by like a thread on everything mm -hmm. he does. Like he barely makes it onto the dock because the ship is sinking. That to me is that could that that's up there with number one with Darth Maul. Yeah. It's 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 funny and it's badass at the same time. I would say uh if I had a favorite scene from Pats of Caribbean, it'd it'd be when he's like getting so close to getting caught. But he keeps getting out of it. Like, he's on that rope. He's, like, flying around. Then he cuts something and he goes down. And they keep, like, reaching yeah. out to grab him or whatever. And he's... That's and that's what I love. Him. He's, like, yeah. narrowly escaping death. That's what mm -hmm. I love about Captain Jack. And the whole time, he's just, like, drunk yeah. or just looking for a rum. He's a he's a very strong character. He's he's on my, like, top ten character list for sure. We need to rewatch those movies. Yeah, it's... A, it's I haven't seen it in so long. I was going to watch them yesterday, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's Captain Jack. Now... That was your number two? That was my number two. My number two, maybe one of the most iconic scenes, Shrek. When he kicks up in the outdoor, outdoor house. Somebody <laughs> once told me. Oh, it was Smash Mouth. Just and gets all that crap. Yeah. <laughs> Smash Mouth makes that scene too. They do. So good. That, that's actually a good one. I didn't even it's, think about that. Yeah, one. it's a great one. Is it like the. He kicks open the door to. It's not his house either. It's no, like, it's an outhouse. He's literally his outhouse. in his swamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, it That's is. That's a good mention, dude. Okay. So that was your... Okay. My number one was Darth Maul, but the one I haven't mentioned on my list yet, which is also just a piece of cinematic... Mm -hmm. This is a masterpiece. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Heath Ledger's Joker on The Dark Knight. The very, the introduction. Oh, yes. The dude. bank robbery scene where you have all these clowns robbing a bank and it's going well, but then, like, each clown kills the other clown. I, mm -hmm. So, like, you have one guy that's drilling into the bank vault. That's his job. When he's done, okay, shoots that guy. You have one dude who, like, has the costumes, gives the costumes, okay, thanks. Shoots that guy. He's done. Mm -hmm. So they're just taking each other out. They're tying loose ends. And then the bank teller, who's, like, brave, has the 
the shotgun and he's like shooting at them, shooting at them, and then one of them shoots him in the leg. Yeah. And he's like, you know, there's there's nothing different about you. Like all criminals are the same. Like as as the last clown is leaving with the money, that clown he's wearing a mask, turns around and then walks up to him, and he's like, yeah, what is he? something about making people strange. The quote mm -hmm. is. People are just a little strange, something like that. And he takes a mask off, and he's the fucking Joker. He's got yeah. makeup on already, and the scars, and he's underneath. That's the first time you see him. Yeah, I lost it as a kid. I was like, mm. oh my god, because he was always one of my favorite villains. And he takes off the he takes off the mask and does that, and then he puts a smoke grenade in his mouth, and then just walks away, like not caring, right? Mm. And the pin is tied to like the back of his pants. And the Joker just like gets in a bus and drives away, and then the dude's just like panicking. It pulls, and then just like green smoke comes out. Yeah. That scene is so badass. That whole mm -hmm. bank robbery sequence is like the best introduction of a not just character, a movie ever. I think that's the best opening sequence. So good. It is very good. Oh, so good. So, what's the last one on your list? Um, my number one. Like I'm gave me goosebumps like i almost just i was like i gotta leave like this oh my god let's go um let's go was godzilla when it's just all silent and mm -hmm. he's standing up and it's going like from his feet just pan like panning up towards him and he just lets out a like, huge roar mm -hmm. like it just the hair stood up on the back of my neck i was like holy hell like it shook this the theater about to kill someone yeah you talking about the very first Godzilla? Yeah, that very one first in particular. Godzilla. That one in particular. Like you haven't seen him before. Like this is the first time you're ever gonna see him, and like the whole city's already crashed and burning and whatnot, and he's just like standing there. So good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I remember we watched that again in theaters, and I had mm -hmm. goosebumps too, dude. Yeah. I was like, Ooh. that would have been out of my honorable mentions. But mm -hmm. since you mentioned it now, it's out of my honorable mentions. So really quickly, we're gonna go through the honorable mentions. We've only been through two questions, but this one was a long one. It was a beefy one. There's a lot to cover. We have, and we both agree on this one, the scene from Gangster Squad, where at the very end, I don't think a lot of people talk about that movie, the very end you have this mafia dude who's the villain, he comes out with two Tommy guns, and he's like, here comes Santa Claus, that's the line, and then it goes in slow motion, two mm. fucking Tommy guns, not even practical, but just, it's cool, <laughs> it's I don't even know if you can aim, at all, just... yeah, not accurate, and, yeah. and it's slow motion, and it's at Christmas time, so there's like these ornaments falling from a Christmas tree, the bullets are going through it, breaking, so good. It is. That's one of them. I have, um, I think I have the mask when he first puts on the mask and spins mm -hmm. and he's like smoking and he's like fucking wacky and cartoony. That's a good one. Um, Hannibal Lecter. That's, that's a badass one. one too. Where like he has the mask and he's, you know, they wheel him in. Hello, Clarice, all that. I'd say King Kong when he comes out beating his chest, like, mm -hmm. Peter Jackson's King Kong. That's the one I think of when I think of King Kong. Oh, same here. And then I have the one with a young Robert De Niro. Uh, what's the name? Is it Cape Hill? What's Cape, the... yeah. Cape, I want to say Cape Cod, but it's not Cape Cod. No. Um, okay. It's the one where um, it's a young Robert De Niro. He's in prison, and it opens with him doing like these dips and he's covered in tattoos and the music that's playing is so it's just ominous yeah. yeah and he's just doing he's just cranking out dips to me it's a badass character entrance mm -hmm. that's my honorable mentions yeah are there any in there that you didn't have um yes small soldiers what entrance um both when like the villains are just now getting made, and when that one villain's like dying, and he like grabs his face, mm -hmm. and, like grab like breaks his head and grabs a chip out of him. He's like, "Oh, you'll live. You're still gonna live." That was one. Uh, Terminator, when Arnold Schwarzenegger first gets like evolved, and he's like, "I need your boots, your pants, your motorcycle now." Oh yeah, to the biker yeah. dude, badass. Um, Men in Black. Ooh. Yeah. Which which introduction? Um, cockroach man. Cockroach man, and also when you cockroach see those man. little skinny dudes that look like ducks. Oh, what's up? Yeah. those and guys. Also, yeah. Hey, what? And they're like Hispanic. <laughs> yeah. They're like, like kind of racist, but like, <laughs> racist. but like funny. Yeah. yeah. Like funny. They're in a respectful way. Um. I don't, I don't know if it's like an entrance of Django, but I feel like Django has to be. Yeah. When um the bounty hunter, he comes in. And, like, he just drops the land on him and, like, shoots the guy. 
Yeah, he's like trying to buy. Yeah, he's trying to buy Django him. to get information from him because mm -hmm. he was his slavers were who he was hunting down. Yeah, and he's like trying to buy him. These dudes are like, hey, he's ain't for sale, I ain't for sale. And he's like, oh, I bet he will. And then he drops it and just blasts their heads off. Yeah, because he's like posing as a dentist. And he's like, you dropped my horse. So good. That's that's a really good mm -hmm. one too. It's Cape Fear, by the way, not Cape, Cape Fear. Cape Fear is one with Robert De Niro. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of that question. It was a long question, but I feel like it was a good ass question. Oh, I still got honorable mentions. Oh, you still have... Oh, shit. Oh, my yeah. bad. Go, go, go. Uh, Crazy Eight. Is that, that the one with all the assassins, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Smoke and Aces. Smoke and Aces. Crazy Eight is a... Uh, Isn't that a, That's a gangster on Breaking Bad. Really? Crazy Eight? Yeah, that was like the guy that... No, I'm thinking of... Uh, Ace of... Seven Psychopaths? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one he's like... Your dog has a faggot face. And he's like, my dog does not have a faggot face. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. His face isn't gay. Yeah. yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Maybe that's just, I think that's not even like a entrance. That's just like a scene, I guess. Yeah, that's just a scene. Yeah. But the um, entrance I was thinking about on. Um, Smoking Aces does Smoke have a good Aces. entrance at the very beginning. There's two henchmen that are just like kind of talking shit, yeah. and like it's focusing on them, and all of a sudden somebody walks up behind and just shoots both of them in the back of the head and keeps walking. Mm -hmm. I think that's the entrance of one of the assassins on that. One of the ones I like though is when like they shot up that one dude, and that guy's like apologizing. He's like, you know, I just did it for business, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I understand. Then he looks away and just grabs his pistol and like lights the dude up and just blasts him. Yeah, I think that's just another scene though. I don't know if it's an introduction. Well, oh, damn it. We'll have to do scenes or something. We'll have to do like All another right. question later on. Then Circle it, start, and we'll talk about it in another podcast. Star, star, star. Star, star, star. star. Another um, mention, Sinister, when they first see Mr. Boogie. Okay. And he's like at the woods, and they're like looking at this page, and they pull it up, and he's just like sitting there. That creeped me the fuck out. Yeah, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. I think that's the best horror movie ever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another one. This one is Batman. But it's the old Batman and new Batman. New Batman is when Bane was introduced. Mm, when he's yeah, like, when introduced. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the old Batman, it, it's kind of funny, but I, I just thought it was like perfect entrance. It was Penguin with Danny DeVito. Oh he's got God. all them penguins coming in, and he's like just like waddling in there. Ama I love, amazing villain. Yeah. So good. Then um, another one that's kind of funny but serious was Spider-Man. When Green Goblin's first getting like... Introduce like they give you that. He's like, nah. <laughs> 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 he grabs one and chucks them. Yeah, that's when they first like inject them or yeah. expose them to the whatever chemical. Yeah, those are some good ones. Mm -hmm. We could have done a whole podcast. Yeah, we could. It was a good ass question slash topic. Um, okay, so we got those two. I guess we could very quickly our last we'll question. The villain movie. Yeah, very quickly we'll do the villain movie. Yeah. This question we came up with was, what movie would you make um, for a villain of your choice where, like, they win at the end or it's, like, an origin movie? Anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, what what villain would you want? What Because this kind of ties into Suicide Squad, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a movie about villains. So what movie would you make about a villain? Uh, the villain I would make that I would want to see, like, an origin story and then win at the end mm -hmm. um, would be Small Soldiers. Small soldiers. Mm -hmm. Which villain? Well, you saw how they were made. Yeah, but okay. I would like them to win at the end and like, I guess you could say grow, like get more of. Oh small shit! Soldiers. Like, yeah. what what would they have done if they were successful? Yeah, it's interesting. Honestly, yeah. I think what they would do, they would like install that chip in like every piece of technology they could, and things would just be on autopilot. The machines are taking over, man. Because I, I, over. I always like like. Like, don't get me wrong. I did like the good heroes, like Archer and all them. But I was like, the toy soldiers, because I grew up playing with those. So I was like, those are badass. I want them to win. Mm -hmm. Like, those are so cool. And I just wanted to see more of those tiny soldiers and like more variety of them. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, like a variety. Like, what? Who else could they like? Different characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like that. Different character models. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, for mine, I feel like. I feel like this is a cheap answer though i feel like this is so cheap um one i always want to see the joker win yeah. i thought about maybe doing saber tooth because i like saber tooth because i like wolverine saber tooth would be pretty good too they don't really have a movie or anything mm, about they it. don't the most they had was x-men origins which was god awful terrible yeah like the beginning war sequence which was really good but um would be darth maul 
It'd be Darth Maul. That, that's what I was going to put on here, too, but it's like, no, you know. Yeah. I'm not, like, a big fan like you. I mean, yeah. I'd like to see it, but I seen like... I'd like to see... Like, I'd like, I wouldn't mind seeing his origin movie because he has whole stories about how he was taken from his family, how he trained, how, you know, he's just... He was a badass killer. And there's yeah. even a book I have where, like, he goes to prison, and he has to stay undercover, so he can't like, use a lightsaber. He can't use the Force. He has to just use his horns and, like, his wits and his fists, you know? Like, he has to hide that there's Sith um, from the Jedi. That'd be cool. And then also, like, just, I wanted to see him win. Mm -hmm. Seeing him win. Because he could have. That's, that's yeah. I guess, what was so tragic about his story. I, sometimes I'm always, not sometimes. Not always. Uh, sometimes I'm rooting on the villain to win. Because mm -hmm. I love the villain. I think, I think a good villain makes a good movie. Yeah. His, him winning would have been interesting. It would have. I think he would have became so powerful, he could have took, he could have killed the Emperor. I really do. He took out Qui-Gon Jinn, who was supposed to be, like, one of the best like they say he was up there with Mace Windu as far as fighting capabilities and he took him out kind of with ease while he was fighting two people right I mean yeah because I'd like to see Mace Windu and Darth Maul that'd be a fun fight oh that I'd, I'd like to see him fight other villains like mm -hmm. General Grievous if General Grievous was around at the time Count Dooku I'd like to see him fight all these yeah. dudes you know granted in my head I think I make him a little bit more powerful than what he is <laughs> yeah. but I think it's because like you never saw his top potential mm -hmm. you just saw you him just saw at the him beginning, at, like, the beginning of, yeah. that was only like a few interactions that was like maybe i don't want to lie here because he killed a jedi before he killed a jedi while he was training but that was like the first time he got to test himself against a master he's killed jedis but he didn't kill one he didn't never fought one like at that level and he just fucked him up <laughs> like backwards stabbed his ass <laughs> liam neeson's out of the picture dude yeah. and he could have killed obi-wan but he was touring with him and then obi-wan jumped and yeah sliced his ass in half so that was our villain movies we'd like to make Let's see, 51 minutes. So, we, we were kind of aiming for this to be around an hour, hour and 15. I think we're making good time. Me too. We're going to transition from the questions. I forgot which, all about that, yeah. The movie review? Yep. I'm telling you, I told you we could have made a whole one about questions. The questions are more fun than the movie review. Honestly, they are. But we got to give the people what they need. So, we're going to do maybe a, a similar model like what we're doing now later on. Um, Maybe we'll just do podcasts of nothing but questions. Maybe we'll do podcasts, podcasts of nothing but reviews. Maybe we'll combine it like we're going to do today. The best thing you can do for us is write in the comments. What do you want to see? What you prefer. Yeah. Do you want an hour, hour and 15 long podcast of us just rambling about like just the questions that we come up with on our heads? Because we come up with some pretty wacky shit. Yeah. Or do you like the reviews of like recent mm -hmm. movies or not even recent movies, old movies, movies? that like we like y'all like and i think i'm thinking about what we're going to do is we're going to we'll put in the description like this is where the review starts so if you don't want to listen to our questions you could just go to the review look at the review mm -hmm. or if you don't want to listen to the review you could just skip it on the last 10 minutes but either way here's the review mm -hmm. james gunn james guns james guns suicide, suicide squad. squad there we go james gunn suicide squad Woo! let's go his new suicide squad movie that was on we watched it on hbo max mm -hmm. um it was his take on it. I don't know if it's supposed to be a sequel. They had Harley Quinn in there, so it's yeah. almost like a sequel. It's but it was almost like a remake. Yeah. Honestly, DC, you got to figure your shit out. You do. Your movies be confusing me. Um, very, very briefly, the first Suicide Squad DC came out with. I was pumped mm -hmm. for it because the trailer had yeah. really good music in it. Very good music. And then the movie was Donkey Balls. Like, yeah. The just movie straight, was just straight Donkey ass. Balls. Not the good kind of ass either. Just... Bad. I mean, it was uh, the movie was asshole. Yeah, it was so bad. Straight, straight stinky asshole. If I was to give a legit review of the Suicide Squad that two DC out came out with, two out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say like a three. I saw three. I think I said four out of ten before, but now I'm trying mm -hmm. to justify why I'd even give it that high. Like a three out of ten. The only thing I liked about the movie was the soundtrack and the fact I liked how like introducing the characters mm -hmm. in like a montage type way. Yeah, and they're all in the GSL, so, like you know all the, that. Like, that was cool. But then was. the the film was so choppy. Yeah, and shit. you know I'll say four, I'll say four out of ten. I'll go back to four out of ten because Will Smith and Harley Quinn they 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 were good. Oh but, yeah, they paid well. But the movie was just so choppy. It made no sense. And the mm -hmm. villains and the, 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 the shit. Mm -hmm. It was just shit. Um, like that was the first Suicide Squad. Yeah. This one, I was actually looking forward to. The trailer looked all right, but because James Gunn directed it, who, you know, he made Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm a huge fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. 
He also made that one zombie movie that just came out. Um, Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead? No. Is that the one? Uh, it's real colorful. We just watched it on Netflix. Yeah, Go in the Casino? Yeah. Might be Day of the Dead. I think it's Day of the Dead. I don't know. But that was good. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. That was. Um, so I'm a fan of his work. I think he play. He's got a. He's cool, got smooth transitions. Very smooth transitions. Yeah. Um, the vibes in his movie. I hate the that colors. I just said that, but like, yes, yes, he's got good vibe. I mean, there, are, there are there are vibes in his movies. Yeah. When you watch it, there's a feeling to it. Mm -hmm. It's like Quentin Tarantino. He has his own feel that he puts in movies. He does. James Gunn's got the same. Good comedy elements, all that. Um. So we were excited to see it. We watched it, and. So I guess we could break it down. We could talk about the plot and the story. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, first of all, like, what did you rate it out of 10? You would do that first? Because um, usually people do that at the very end. You go over yeah, everything in that. The, we did. Uh, we, did that we're thing. not everybody else. We could go We could go first. It doesn't matter. Um, nah, I'll save it for end. Okay, we'll save it for the end. The plot and story. How did you feel about the plot? Like, uh, the actual storyline of what's going on, what are they doing? Um... Uh, I mean, it was it was all right. The plot and storyline I thought was okay. Yeah, it, it was, was nothing it different. Mm -mm. I wasn't too like about the main villain. I wasn't too. I was like clueless. I was like, who? Why? Yeah, who, who? is that? Why? Yeah. Um, and it's just like you know, rescue mission. We got to rescue Harley Quinn. That that part was funny. Yeah, because she already had escaped. I guess I guess we're doing a spoiler review. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's in it's in the trailer though. Yeah. Do you want to do a spoiler review or no spoiler review? I feel like spoiler review. It's We're gonna, gonna have happen. spoilers. We're gonna yeah. have spoilers. It's Watch just, it at your own video. discretion. You know. Yes. You already know. Um, the plot, the actual synopsis of what they're doing, what they're doing, I think was kind of. That's not where the magic was, which yeah. I'm, which I think is a cool concept though. The plot didn't have to be that strong because yeah. of the way James Gunn filmed the characters and the way he shot the scenes. Mm -hmm. I think that's what made the movie, not the plot. The plot was just kind of like a tool for the characters to kind of flourish in. Yeah. Um, so plot, eh, whatever, right? They're mm -hmm. just trying to save, they gotta go get some information, they can't know about the information. They get the information, and it turns out they weren't supposed to get the information. They yeah. were supposed to just destroy it. Um, but Rick Flagg, which is the leader of this entourage, a soldier, mm -hmm. he like decides, no, this needs to be out to the this, public. Yeah. People need to see this. Because the U.S. government is kind of like experimenting on people. So it, it turns out the U.S. government is actually the villain mm -hmm. of the movie. Um, so deep, dark, and edgy. I like it. Me too. But the plot itself was like, eh. But it needed to be eh. It didn't need to be anything else yeah. more than eh. You don't because of that. my next point that we're going to rate, characters. Sure. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So the characters is what made this movie. You had squad A, you had squad B. Mm-hmm. First squad is like, I can't even, Javelin, Weasel, uh, Dismemberment, dismem it was like D TFK, DFK, yeah, he had like, initial, he had like uh, letters, letters for names. yeah, they're like, what does it stand for, so I, I don't know, <laughs> uh, Harley Quinn, Rick Flagg, um, he had like this, but the first part of the movie, these are the characters you're introduced to, you're like, okay, this yeah. is the Suicide Squad. This, the first part of the movie, you see this one guy, and you're like, oh, this is going to be main character for like, most of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like bouncing the ball. He's like bouncing the ball. It shows him in his jail cell. They're playing Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like they're building on it would be like a badass. Like, oh, they, they want me back. You know, the, the typical, they want me back. I haven't worked in so long. Like, I, all right, I'll do it for my freedom. Mm -hmm. So show this squad. They're, they're pretty badass. Um, and then in the first 10 minutes of the movie, they get fucking Watch chopped. Out. They get chopped up. They get killed. Yeah. Which I think that is what makes the movie. That sets the pace. That sets the tone. Mm -hmm. The tone is don't get attached to anybody. And it's just hilarious. This they they die. Suicide in, mission. Yeah. 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 Suicide Boomerang. Mission. Captain Boomerang, who came from the very first Suicide Squad movie. He was like a, he was a favorite mm -hmm. next to Harley Quinn. Killed. Just wiped yeah. out. I thought he was going to be like a, maybe a big part of the movie. Yeah. But the like watching it and thinking back to the trailer, I'm like, they didn't show much of him or mm -hmm. Weasel or the Javelin guy or... Yeah. Um, you know the comedian Peter, whatever they meant. Mm -hmm. They didn't show. They did good at like hiding, masking. hiding. Yeah, you mm -hmm. couldn't really guess what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Which is like a, a very strong. Like they advertised the movie very well. Yeah, the marketing was good. Um, it wasn't like the first Suicide Squad where they showed scenes that weren't even in the movie. Yeah. 
you know. They showed amazing scenes and they were wanting the movie. Yeah, the Joker just, coming back yeah. with a half-burnt face yeah. never happened. Uh, but the characters, yeah. So then they all get wiped out and it was in a funny fashion. Mm -hmm. um, what about the characters that lived, you know? So you have John Cena's... Um, Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper. You had Bloodsport, mm -hmm. uh, played by Idris Elba. That's you had um, Rick Flagg and Holly Quinn, they survive. Mm -hmm. Really they survive from the beginning. Oh, oh, yeah. So, like, they rejoin. They have King Shark, Polka Dot Man. I feel like they did, uh... The Rat Lady. I feel like they did good with the characters, honestly. They did, too. Like, even the character development. Like, mm -hmm. they didn't go in depth, but I feel like you didn't really need to. Like, you already mm -hmm. knew what they were doing. And I feel like if you did go in depth, it would take away from the actual story. That exactly. Was put. Like, they had to use shitty characters because yeah. it's the Suicide Squad. They're sending them on mission... They're sitting on a mission, they know they're going to die, so you don't mm -hmm. want to use anybody too valuable. But it's also like, Jane, like they did good at selecting and characters. They used characters they could like control. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're not too powerful, not mm -hmm. too OP. But also, they did good at directing direction-wise, because like the audience don't know who these characters are, but they're so kind of shitty that you don't have to give an origin story. Yeah. You waste time giving an origin story. You don't have to show somebody getting bit by a spider, mm -hmm. and then, oh, my powers. Oh. Like, instead of that, it's just like... Polka Dot Man, he's fucking weird. He got Polka Dots. This chick yeah. controls rats. This dude's a giant shark. Like, and I feel like James Gunn did way better at explaining, just just incorporating these characters better than the first one. Because mm -hmm. the first one was such, like, they were just word vomiting. Yeah. Like, their origin story. Like, this is Katana. She captures people's souls with her Katana. Yeah. Then they would have no part of the movie. It's like, yeah. why This is Slipknot, that? dude. Slipknot's <laughs> the first one. Yeah. Where he just dies in 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm like, head why, why? He climbs things. Like, that was too shitty. Yeah. But he picked characters He picked characters that were, like, shitty, but they could, they would have some kind of value uh -huh. in a mission such as this one. Um, right off the bat, who was your favorite character? Um, or favorites. Like, the rat lady, she was useful, wasn't really my favorite. Her story was, her story was sweet. Yeah. It was sweet, but, like, I, if she, if she died, mm-hmm. If she dies, she dies. I would not care. I think I have like probably three favorites. Okay. Go. Maybe more. Um, Holly Quinn's up there. Mm hmm. Um, Classic. Polka Dot, really. I don't know why, but Polka Dot, I really like Polka Dot. Um, who else? Well, why are you thinking? I think I, I think I might give it Bloodsport, too. Bloodsport was cool. Yeah. My two favorite characters of the movie. Or Polka Dot Man and King Shark. I was going to say King Shark too, but... They didn't have... I, I might replace Polka Dot. Oh, no, because they're both... Yeah. See, Harley Quinn was... She killed it, as usual. Mm -hmm. But what they did good in this movie is... They let the other characters shine. They don't like... The other Suicide Squad movie was the Harley Quinn show. It was all yeah. about her. But I think that's... It's good that they did Birds of Prey. It's about her. Mm -hmm. And Suicide Squad, it let the squad shine. It wasn't just her. Yeah, you know? it wasn't just main characters. It was like, so she had a part in the movie, but she wasn't like a, she came in kind of later. Mm -hmm. So I like Polka Dot Man just because he was weird and bizarre, and he saw his mom and every villain. Yeah. They thought that was hilarious. I think that was the funniest part of the movie for me. Mm -hmm. I like King Shark just because he was strong and kind of dopey and stupid, which yeah. also made the movie. I liked it anytime he was on on screen. It was you know funny. Yeah, you like you want to see him. Yeah. Bloodsport also had a good story. Pe you know, Peacekeeper was a, he was cheesy, but he was supposed to be cheesy. Mm -hmm. So I think they they flushed out the characters really well. Yeah, I think they did really well. Rick Flag was honorable because he wanted to like expose the truth. Um. So yeah, I think that's good. My only complaint about the characters, and this is just like this is me being picky, is like. And that's how Suicide Squad's supposed to be. You're not supposed to care if they die. But as far as the relationship goes, it was very fast-paced. So it's like, you don't... I, I personally didn't feel like they were really that connected with each other. The most you yeah. get is when they're dancing at the bar and, like, they're all kind of partying. That that was the best part as far as them bonding. Maybe if they had, like, one more scene like that where they're bonding in some stupid way. Yeah. Um, but I, know, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I feel like they didn't really i feel like a bond would be cool but i feel like they didn't really want them to have a bond yeah like yeah. the people that were holding them because like if they get bond then you know they work together they get they stronger could, yeah exactly so and that's a good like, point that's yeah. a good point i feel like it's just like oh up and come the mission we need people all right send these random people up to do this like yeah no and i like i think that's like a very mm -hmm. good point um 
I don't know. I, I think it's just like that's just my personal preference. Yeah. Um, a bond would be cool though. I'd, I would have liked to see that. Yeah. Which I'll get in, I'll get more into why I came to the score I came to like whenever I give the score mm -hmm. later on like why I deducted. Um, so the music and the score. Let me just go ahead and say. I love the Pixies, the band. I like a lot of their music because it's just weird, and I like weird music. And Johnny Cash. Yeah. I, I I love Johnny Cash. I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan. I'm not even that big of a country fan. I just like Johnny Cash for what he stood for, his sound, his music. Both were featured in this movie, and oh my god, it was so good. Just yeah, outstanding. That killed it. The sound. So that those two songs for me kind of made the soundtrack. Like, yeah, really. And they didn't use anything else besides like those two songs they opened with Folsom Prison Blues Johnny Cash yeah. which I think set the pace really well um and then they um they played the song Hey by Pixies yeah. which I've never heard that in a movie me neither I've always listened to it and I'm like am I the only one who knows this song I don't I don't hear a lot of people talking about, I guess it's an older song mm -hmm. um it's kind of like I don't know Selfish of me to think, oh, am I the only one who heard this song? Obviously, people have heard it, and it's a it, Pixies is a pretty big band. I've just never seen it featured in anything. I don't, you know, it's not a song people talk about or they play at parties, but like the scene where they play that and they come walking out all together and they show it in the trailer with like it's real, like it's raining, but like it's also there's light outside. I thought it was so cool. It was so cool. Um, so music score, did you like it? I liked it. Oh yes, I think it killed. I did again. Only complaint, and this is just me being picky. Like, whenever I complain, whenever I do these reviews, I'm also kind of like, this is kind of what I would do. Maybe I should just make that a section later. I'll do that later. But, um, okay, cinematography, James Gunn, I think, killed it. He did. Killed it. Color, the colors, bright, vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. It's dark when it needs to be dark, but there's still color behind it. Deaths and everything are flushed out nice and well. They're dramatic, but they're also, you know, they're humorous and bloody. Mm -hmm. But my favorite part about James Gunn is, like, the way he does his transitions. You know? Like, he'll spell out now or present day with, like, the leaves on the beach that they're walking. Like, he'll spell it out there. Or he'll use the environment, like, in the scene as things are going on to tell the story. And I think that's so just, like... I'm a huge fan of James Gunn. top notch. Like, yeah. Very great transition without, yeah. like, trying to be too obvious. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think he killed it with that. Um, okay, so real quick, I guess, before we give our scores, what, is there anything you would change about the movie? Because I think that's what kind of, I guess I'm kind of unfair with my reviews because I'm like, well, I'm taking away this because he could have done this instead of this. But that's kind of how reviews work. Yeah. Um, if I had something to uh, take, like change or take away, I guess it'd be uh, like, and I, I thought about this just at the beginning. It's probably the villains having more like interaction with each other. Like since they're villains, you should be trying to fight each other. Like you know. Okay, so you think they should be like a little bit scrappier with yeah. each other, not as I like that. Because that's why they're locked up. You know, you're bad. Yeah. No, I do like that. Mm -hmm. A little bit more of that kind of interaction would be nice. They tease each other, but they're never like. Yeah, they're just like roasting each other. It's not really like. We didn't even talk about Weasel. We didn't. On characters, they had fucking Weasel. They had Weasel. Such a deep. Deep, deep concept. Deep concept, deep character, his background they give, <laughs> his romance story they give, yeah. you know, his love, uh, his moves. His love for children. Yeah, his love for the 27 children that he ate. <laughs> uh, his move set, you know, yeah. his weapons that he his uses. His swimming ability. All jokes aside, I love that they put Weasel in there because mm -hmm. of what he was. He was fucking weird and gross. I love weird and gross. But it's like... I want to know the concept of when they pick the team. Why they pick that? Why team? did they pick Weasel? Yeah. Everybody else, oh I'd be God. like, I mean, even the hand guy is yeah. dumb as fuck. But maybe they could like sneak with the, or maybe you could go like get keys off of somebody yeah. and bring it back. Why Weasel? <laughs> like, they, they, they didn't give they him a gun. Just get rid of him. Like this guy's so weird. We need to get. We kill gotta him. kill He's this gonna, motherfucker. Yeah. Which he was one the only ones that did not die. Yeah, he was one of the few that didn't die. I'm like, how? He, he, you think at the beginning of the movie he's the first yeah. one to die because he can't swim and they just throw his ass and they're like, do we check if he can swim? He's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, ah, and, and he just, just drowns. drowns. Doesn't talk. He just goes. <laughs> kind of sounds like our deaf aunt, if I'm yeah. being honest. Which sounds bad, but it's true. It sounds bad, but I mean, there are family members, yeah. so. 
that's what he's like he like no communication skills can't communicate no superpowers literally just a giant fucking gross weasel yeah just a throw ball a hairball that a cat threw up that's exactly him. exactly yeah um but yeah I, I love that character i thought it was hilarious hilarious i was looking forward to see when the word they were going to do with him mm -hmm. i was telling jacob they're going to kill him right off the bat and, and i was I said, wrong because no. yeah. they didn't kill him they, he survived but he had no place in the like he didn't play a part of the movie <laughs> which i loved yeah um so yeah anything you change so you would change the interactions right mm -hmm. that they would fight more yeah i like that i like that concept i i would also like if they showed more of they showed a little bit i like seeing them in the prison mm -hmm. i like seeing i think that's just a badass way to introduce the characters and stuff i, I want to see them in the prison maybe fighting in the prison and yeah. even if you do a thing where like you show other characters like you could have shown killer croc a, a good killer croc Without having him in the story, you could have had the camera painting from different yeah. cells showing like Clayface, him. Because they showed Calendar Man, but I was like, no one knows Calendar Man. Yeah, they didn't. Well, do, at least I don't. Yeah, I they didn't do anything the with him too. Yeah. They could have had a funny part where he's just like just keeping track of all the dates in his cell mm -hmm. and like etching in stuff like that. Like different fights would have been cool between the the group. The most they had was King Shark trying to eat the Rat Lady, and then they're like, <laughs> stop, and they just kept shooting him. And then after that, they were yeah, friends. Okay. okay, friends. Um. That's something I would change. I think they could have used... I love the music. I love yeah. Johnny Cash's Folsom Prison Blues. And I loved Hey. Uh, hey, uh, no complaints. They did that scene perfectly. Because in the song, they say, you know, we're chained. At the end, they say over and over, we're chained, we're chained, we're chained. It goes well with the fact that they're prisoners. Mm -hmm. And they're chained. They're chained to this mission. They're chained to the fact that they have to do this mission they don't want to do for mm -hmm. freedom. Or I don't even think that they promised them freedom. It's just like mm -hmm. you get out of your cell to do something which they wanted to do. So I like that. It was kind of deeper than just a good song on top of a badass scene. But Folsom Prison Blues, you had, um, you know, he's just bouncing the ball. It, it was one character introduction. Yeah. I feel like they could have shown, even the characters that were about to die 10 minutes later, it would have been cool to use that song on each of the characters because they just show them pulling this one character out and then all the other characters are already lined up okay here you go let's go that might have took a little bit more time but i wouldn't have minded that i wouldn't have mind having a little bit more time of um as that song is playing you could have showed weasel scurrying around in his cell scurrying around on the roof or something yeah. you could have showed the arm dude you know he could have had one arm over here one arm over here playing like that pong game where you just mm -hmm. bounce the ball out of one another he could have been doing that and then just the other dudes fucking around. I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I like I like it when they do that compilation of, like, this character with his ability doing a specific thing. I think it's it makes each character unique in that way. Mm -hmm. Which I like. It was also cool because they weren't unique. They all fucking died. <laughs> they had their own thing, but they died. Um, that's why... Th these are just the things I kind of took away. This is why I came to my final score... Or was there anything else you would have changed from the movie? Yeah, I just thought of one thing. Uh, who's that comedian who got shot in the face? Peter. Peter. Something. I don't know. Yeah. Keep going on about him while I figure uh, out I name. feel like they should have went a little bit more in depth how he ratted them out. Because he's just like, oh, I ratted you all out. But it's like, when did you have time to do that? Like, how? Like, I didn't know if he was a villain. Pete or, Davidson. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know if Pete Davidson was like a villain or if he was locked up previously or if he was a guard. Yeah, I didn't know like how he ratted them out. Like, and it's hard. It's hard to like review this movie. It's hard to do that. I, I understand. But yeah. At the same time, like, it's hard to review this movie because like it's also that was done intentionally. Yeah. Where they're like, it's almost they like keep you guessing. Like, yeah, it's also and it's like, what does it matter? They're like, what does it matter if you know how he ratted it out? He's dead now. Like that's, that's why I like Suicide Squad. Is like, what does it matter? This guy's ability. He just got fucking blown up. Mm -hmm. You know, or they show a little bit of his ability. Oh, cool, and then dead. Like you can't get attached to anybody. I kind of like those movies because it's unpredictable. Yeah. Right now, we're going through, like, a thing in superhero movies of, like, it's just so repetitive. repetitive. It's getting kind of dry. The well yeah. is getting dry where it's like, okay, you know Ant-Man's going to live at the end. You know mm -hmm. this guy's going to live at the end. That's so why... this was a, it was a good refreshment. Like, it's good. It's refreshing. Okay. You don't know who's going to live, who's yeah. going to die. You know? The deaths, which we've already gave some spoilers. I, I don't think I want to spoil who's going to die. We've Well, we spoiled some people who some. die, but people of the main squad who die... Yeah. Those came unexpected. I thought some of those people were going to live. Oh, same here. You know. Um, some of our favorite characters, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I don't know if they're going to live. I, like, you, at the edge of the seat, like, man, I'm kind of, I'm rooting on them to live. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I gave the movie an 8.5.
eight and a half out of ten. Yeah. Which, to me, um, I I think is a very good. That's very good. That's very good. That's yeah, upper that's... echelon. And I just took it away because I wish they used the song more. I wish the character introduction was more. I kind of wish they were more bonded, but. I think James Gunn made it the way he made it for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, for me personally, 8.5. That's why I kind of took away some. What about you? I'll probably give it um, like an. I was gonna say nine, but I did take away like a few things. But pro probably like 8.7, almost. 8.7. Yeah. yeah, a little higher than 8.5. Not yeah. quite a nine. Mm -hmm. Def like definitely like it the the lowest you can go on this movie is an eight. I think I saw somebody yeah. give it like a seven out of ten, and I'm like, no man, mm -hmm. this movie's too. F it's definitely above average. It's like, a fun movie. You yeah. got to grade it as a fun movie. What it is, you know. Um, I do feel like, and I, I was like, I didn't say, but eight point five. I feel like the comedy aspect they could have done a little bit more funnier yeah. things with like, each. I feel like uh, they they could show like a funnier way how a uh, polka dot excreted his polka dots. Like, because you, like you mentioned, you said, oh, was he masturbating in the woods? I was like, oh, that'd be hilarious. Like, yeah. that'd be a, a fucking funny way for him to get rid of his polka dots. I thought he was jacking off in the woods. Yeah. And I think, I think honestly, they, they, they imply it like he is. I don't think he is, though. I think he's just shooting him out. Yeah, I thought he was just behind but he, him. But he says, like, oh, I do it twice a day. And, like, I don't, I don't know. I think of, like, Matthew McConaughey, like, twice, twice a day. Twice a day. Like, whatever he says in, uh... Wolf of Wall Street. That's kind of what I thought. I'm like, oh, twice a day. Like, he's got to drink off twice a day or mm -hmm. else he explodes. But, yeah, I think they could... You know, and, like, King Shark. I feel mm -hmm. like they could have had a little bit more with him. Um, and then, final thing, and then this is done because we've already gone an hour and 16. I feel like I've had a lot of fun, though. I, oh, wanna, I'll, I can't wait I for... This. I cannot wait for future movie podcasts because we can be ourselves. We can be loosey-goosey. We're not talking about just UFC stats. But since I... I just thought about this. Since I said, for me personally, the villain is what makes a movie good. Yeah. That's what makes a movie interesting. I feel like that would have given a solid 9 out of 10 if you had a great villain. Yeah. Now, the villain was goofy. Yeah. It, it was a giant starfish with an eye. The concept of it controlling everybody and stuff. like, Look, at the end of the day, all these superhero movies, all the villain has always been like a, a laser beam that shoots from the sky. is going to end the world. Yeah. That's been, you know That was the first Suicide Squad. That was, mm -hmm. There's always like a laser beam and, oh, we got to stop it. Um I'd like to see more smaller scale villains, just like smaller scale shit, but like big enough to where you need a team to yeah. attack them. Like a smaller scale villain, but it's super powerful. Like, yeah, if like, like for, oh, I don't think any of thing of this, but then like destroys the whole board, and you're like, well, fuck. My ex my example would be like Daredevil. The reason Daredevil Daredevil on Netflix works so well is because you have like Kingpin, mm -hmm. you have Bullseye, you have like these lower level villains that are so badass and they're so powerful at their one specific thing. But it's not like if they win the entire world's over. It's like, yo, the villain wins sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a silly villain. I think it was a cool concept as yeah. far as the starfish with an eye. The colors were cool. It sprayed other um, versions of itself outside of its nasty, armpit. But... Yeah, the armpit was gross. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was cool that you got to see each. I like the villain. I just, um, if I was to rate the villain out of 10, I would give it like maybe a 5 or a 6, which is like fair. Yeah. I feel like they could have done better with it, but I, I think it was cool to have a giant villain in the way that they did because you had that cool shot with Holly Quinn diving through the eye. Mm -hmm. You had the rats eating it, which is disgusting. Yeah, you had polka dot like getting its leg. Exactly, like molting its leg. You had, um, you. It was cool because you got to see your the all the teammates. You got to see the squad like team up to defeat this. Yeah, all working on the same villain at the same time. So that was that was dope. I do. The villain was like a five or a six. Mm -hmm. Could have been cooler, but I think it served its purpose. So that's why I gave it an eight point five. That's why you give it an eight point seven. Yeah. Um, but let us know in the comments if there's a movie y'all would like us to review. I think for future reference, we're also going to review video games because there's been some interesting betas that came out mm -hmm. and the questions. We could have rambled on about the questions. Yeah, we Look, at the end of the day, it's called rambling reels with the rays. We're the rays. We fucking ramble. We we run our mouths, and we love reels. We love movies. We do. So I think a big part of this is going to be like these stupid questions, um, because also, you know the questions. You heard the questions. I want to hear y'all's answers. I want to hear y'all's top ten entrances of a character into a movie, or what you thought. If you thought our lists were shit, tell us our lists were shit. Like no way, dude. That wasn't cool. Yeah. If uh, you know, if you thought Suicide Squad was terrible, if you thought it was better. Let us know in the comments. Like, yeah. I think this really 
will flourish if we get like communication between us mm -hmm. and like the viewer. Because the we can viewer. then like review y'all's comments and say, oh, what do we think about that movie or. Oh, that's a good point. Or, you know, like... Exactly. We, like, we want y'all to play a part in this. Mm -hmm. um, just as much as we're playing into it. Um, I think that'd be fun for everybody. Yeah. Um, but that's it for this one. This is kind of our introduction one. Um, I think it went well. I think it went well. I hope y'all think it went well. And uh, the editing, again, this is the first one, so the editing might be a little, eh, if there is any editing at all. That's something we're going to have to play around with. Mm -hmm. But this is something that we kind of want to do just for the fun of it. Um, yeah. just our own opinions about something that we like, something we're passionate about. I mean, I, I won't shut the fuck up about it. So like, I love watching movies and talking about movies and nerdy shit. So that's it. That's all we have for this one. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in for rambling reels with the rays. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're out. Peace. Sign off.